So today we'll talk about the telecom and architecture and why the SD-WAN architecture is becoming so important for the telecom companies. So let's look at the history. Uh, 30 plus years, the you know old fashioned network used to look like a, a computer that connects to a modem that would dial up into the telecom network with circuit switches. That's called circuit switches that would create a circuit path to connect to the other end of the modem. And then these two computers would talk based on this circuit that was connected on a telephone number on the source side and a telephone number on the destination side. So this is circuit switched which created a circuit path for the two computers to talk. Uh, obviously, you would need a layer two, layer three packets, uh, at least a layer three, where you have the IP level or layer level communication that existed back in the days too. So now from a circuit switch, switch network, the Teleco uh, developed a network called uh, Packet Switched which is now from L1 level, layer one circuit path level to a layer two packet switch where your, your, your path will be determined by a packet's source and destination, not a, a established circuit, virtual circuit. So now you got a device, a CSU device or the CSU DSU device that's gonna connect to your packet switch network, could be an X25, could be an ISDN, could be a frame relay, could be an ATM. All of these networks were packet switched network instead of layer one circuit switched. And these you know, packet switch network would create a path to connect the end devices where now you have a router connecting to this CSU, DSU, and then behind the router, you've got the LAN for the computers and the LANs to work. Right, so now you've evolved from a circuit switch network in the telecom industry to a packet switched network in the core. So you got network one. Now for the data, you got network two. These were the voice days when the data become, became important with uh, more and more businesses switching over data, uh, using data networks for their business. You got this packet switch network that the telecom has developed. And obviously it's got ISDN to it, which integrates your voice and data together with speeds all the way to 1.5 to 45 megs and so on and so forth. These speeds were 19K, 54K, and even 64K depending on the modem and its technology back then. Now from this, you go to MPLS. This MPLS network is IP based and MPLS IP basically means instead of these switches, L2 level switches, and this L1 level switches, now you got a network that's got routers in your core that's gonna provide data services or data connectivity services to your network or customer networks. So you got customers connecting and you're doing customer segmentation or keeping the customer traffic separate by on these PE devices, provider edge devices. And that provider edge gives you the capabilities of VRFs, VPN routing forwarding. And back here, you've got VLANs that comes into a specific VRF, customer one, customer two, coming in into a different VRF <clears throat> and so on and so forth. And then you have an MPLS network that transports your customer traffic. So you got layer one circuits that is completely, you know, ignorant of what's happening at the IP level <clears throat> to a layer two level where you're putting the IP packet into a layer two switched packet network. <clears throat> and then you got an MPLS IP where you got IP into IP encapsulation happening here. And now you got service provider that's got the traditional telephone network. You got service provider that's got the packet switch network. And now you got service providers who've built 
the MPLS network, and they're trying to migrate and consolidate all of this together <clears throat> as they go on. What happens next <clears throat> in this process is that you got an architecture that's called SD-WAN, where you're saying customer edge device, CE device is not a traditional router, but it is a SDN router. <clears throat> An SDN or SDN router, essentially, <clears throat> what it does, it, it creates an overlay. So irrelevant of what happens in the middle, whether it's LTE network, a circuit switch network, a packet switch network, a internet network, or an MPLS network, uh, he doesn't care anymore. He just connects to any one of them or two or more of them, and then he creates an overlay. And that's how the telecom can now segment the traffic. They can segment securely. And then how you secure this traffic, you can use technology like IPsec or any encryption technology to secure the traffic, customer traffic, and keep it separate, keep it different segments, and transport that over your existing infrastructures. So now look at this, that you do not have to build a separate infrastructure. You can use your existing infrastructure and still provide you know, availability if you're having issues here, you can, this device can, this demand edge device can automatically or intelligently switch between this guy or this guy or this guy, or now the internet, right? So now the cores or the telecoms are really, if they have not already gotten rid of the packet switched, and you got multiple cores and the internet sometimes is part of the MPLS or a different core, but out of all the cores that the service providers have, the outage situation that service providers now have to worry about, okay, something went wrong with the core, switch went bad, affects every customer that's connected to it. With SD-WAN, you got two or more connections and he doesn't care. This SD-WAN device would make an intelligent decision based on the end path. So if he's got end-to-end -end connectivity through LTE, through the internet, to the MPLS is automatically gonna switch without any human intervention. And that is why this SD-WAN technology is so awesome and it's so popular. Now a de facto standard for VAN Edge and also the service uh, provider promotes it by partnering with vendors who are providing the SD-WAN solution so that their cores, outdated cores and you know troublesome cores does not become one single point of failure. They can actually use this intelligence at the edge to switch the path dynamically to transport customer traffic. And that's what SD-WAN really provides in, in value. Hope this helps.